This is lesson 40 of Hunger and Thirst for Righteousness. It's called The Untouchables, The Untouchables. And so it's gonna be a really good lesson. I'm looking forward to getting into it. Um, it's gonna be a pretty short lesson compared to the last one. The last one was about 40 minutes. Um, this one will be about 10 to 15 minutes and then we'll be out of here for the day, okay? And so we are still with David. These are his final words. We're gonna break down uh, what he said at the end of his final words. And let's talk about this a little bit. It says, but the worthless, every one of them will be thrust away like thorns because they cannot be taken in hand. But the man who touches them must be armed with iron in the shaft of a spear and they will be, they will be completely burned with fire in their place. So this is a very great passage right here. And once again, when we start off this passage, the, um, David starts by saying, that the spirit of Lord was upon him and his word was on his tongue. Like he was speaking through him. This is the spirit of the Lord talking. And we're, you know, going to go into, um, we're going to go into, you know, obviously we always go into deeper into the Bible and we'll look into something, some things that Jesus said that confirms this is the spirit of the Lord speaking because Jesus said the same thing, quite literally the same things. Um, now this passage really was very powerful though, because there's something in this passage that, me personally, I've never seen before anywhere else in the Bible. It gives you a because. It says, it says, why? Why? Why are some people going to a lake of fire? It says, why? It says, but the worthless, every one of them will be thrust away like thorns because they cannot be taken in hand. So you have to imagine that quite literally, this is what the Lord is saying. He's literally saying that these people, the, these people who are worthless and, and worthless, yeah, they might sound harsh, but to disobey, and we'll talk about this in a little bit, to, to not follow his ways, to not listen, to not know him, you, you're really not going to put forth anything that's worth anything. Like it's not really worth anything. There's no good fruit that's worth anything. There's no... Um, um, you're not producing anything that's worth anything. If I'm just being honest with you, if you shed everything off of the flesh, take all the money out of consideration, take everything physical out of the consideration, the people who are, he's, he's calling worthless, and we'll go into this verse in a second, it says they're worthless because they did not know the Lord. They're not putting forth anything that's worth anything in the spirit. It's not worth anything. But it gives us because it says because they cannot be taken in hand. So you have to imagine, you know, like a plant, right? Or a vine. Let's let's look at a vine, okay? And let's say that you wanna you wanna um, harvest this vine, you wanna keep this vine, you want to preserve this vine, right? But in order to preserve this vine, you've got to grab the vine and pull it off off of the tree. Well, if it has thorns all over it. It's going to hurt really, 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 really bad <laughs> to grab them. And most of us, not even most of us, all of us as humans are like, are not even likely, are not able to take it. You're not able to grab it. You're not able to take that type of pain. You're not able to um, deal with it. Is it quite literally to deal with someone who is worthless in the spirit is extremely painful to deal with them. So why is it that there are people going to a lake of fire? Quite literally, it says in Revelation that in the new heaven, new earth, there will no longer be any pain, no more suffering, no more grief, no more all these things, right? Well, these people bring pain. <laughs> they bring suffering. They bring all these things. And he's literally saying that this is not a part of my new creation. I cannot have what is causing pain and suffering for people to deal with you for me to deal with you causes me to be in pain i have to be in pain to touch you and so let's keep going through this because this is a very 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 good lesson i'm trying to tell you that this is something that when i read this because they cannot be taken in hand it made it clicked for me in so many cylinders there's a lot of good reasons. I can give you seven good reasons why, but this is one of those seven that's a really good reason why that there was some will be in the lake of fire because they cannot be taken in hand. 
to deal with them, to, to try to help them, to do anything for them, to, to come near them is to be hurt, is to be stabbed. And so just so we understand and we see clearly even into the gospel, this is the same message. Matthew 3, 8 to 10, therefore bear fruit in keeping with repentance and do not suppose that you can say to yourselves, we have Abraham for our father. For I say to you that from these stones, God is able to raise up children to Abraham. The ax is already laid at the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree, tree does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So once again, I'm just reading this to you. Most of us have definitely understood this by now. Um, if we're at this point in these lessons and in this, this fourth class, we've talked about this enough for you to understand this by now. But notice the same verbiage that is being spoken by the Lord in 2 Samuel was the same verbiage being spoken by John, which the Lord speaking through John, really, in Matthew. At the end of his, his passage, he literally says they'll be completely burned with fire in their place, in their place. They have their own place and they'll be burning fire in their own place. In their own place. And so going to the next one, let's go. Matthew 13, 47 to 50, he says, And again, the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet cast into the sea and gathering fish of every kind. And when it was filled, they drew it up on the beach and they sat down and gathered the good fish into containers, but the bad they threw away. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels, angels will come forth and take out the wicked from among the righteous, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So once again, this is just another confirmation through that came out of Jesus Christ's mouth, who we know spoke by the Spirit of the Lord, saying the same thing. They're going to be divided. I'm going to to I'm going to um, divide what is good from what is bad, what is worth keeping from what is what is worthless. And once again, the same message, they'll be thrown into the furnace of fire. It's the same message. Second Samuel, John the Baptist in Matthew, Jesus Christ in Matthew. Same message that the Spirit of the Lord is speaking by you. You're not saying anything different. First Samuel 2 12 says, now the sons of Eli were worthless men. They did not know the Lord. So now we're going to go into a little bit about what makes someone actually worthless. What, make, what makes someone um, at risk of being discarded at the end of the age. Now the sons of Eli were worthless men. They did not know the Lord. They did not know the Lord. And so what makes someone worthless and at risk of being discarded? That they do not know the Lord. But why is that? We have to understand that it literally says the good fruit of the spirit, which is said the Lord is spirit. So when we say the spirit, we're talking about the Lord. And we say good fruit, that means that what he produces in somebody. He says our peace, love, joy, patience, kindness, gentleness, self-control, uh, faithfulness, right? Love. I don't know if I said love already. But in knowing the Lord and being in relationship with the Lord, these are things that are produced inside of us that make that make us um worth something something else that literally says in, in in second peter i believe second peter one it literally lists off seven fruitful qualities that, that literally says if you have these qualities you are not worthless you are worth something in the kingdom of god and it says that moral excellence knowledge it says self-control it says perseverance it says godliness it says brotherly kindness and it says love when you know the Lord, these are the things that you exemplify and it makes you worth something. And being worth something has nothing to do with money. There are people that make billions of dollars and in the spirit, they are worth nothing. And that is a reality that they will face when they pass on from this life to the next. And even bigger reality they'll face when, when Judgment Day comes about. Proverbs 6, 12 to 14, a little bit more of the studying about what makes a person worthless. A worthless person, a wicked man. So first of all, a worthless person is also a wicked man. Let's, let's understand that. As we're saying worthless, we're also in, in code saying wicked. 
a worthless person, a wicked man, is the one who walks with a perverse mouth, who winks with his eyes, who signals with his feet, who points with his fingers, who with perversity in his heart continually devises evil, who spreads strife. Now, I love this. Because first of all, we understand that what comes from the mouth comes from the heart. So what, the first thing he points you to is their mouth. What is coming out of their mouth? Who walks with a per perverse mouth? A perverse mouth. Who winks with his eyes. And the point about winking with your eyes is like that's a code of lying, right? Is that like when I'm, I'm winking is I'm saying one thing, but wink, wink, you know what I mean. I'm really saying something else. So they're not transparent. Who signals with his feet? So like once again, it's another signaling. He's trying to say I'm signaling. Uh, I'm not saying things up front. So it's also the thing about a wicked or a worthless person. They're not going to be up front with you about their worthlessness or their wickedness. Who points with his fingers? The pointing of the fingers is about blaming others. Who with perversity in his heart continually devises evil. Continually devises evil. A worthless person continually devises evil. Continually making plans to do the wrong thing. To, to do what, you, what they know is not right. And the last one is even is the best one. Who spreads strife. A worthless person spreads strife. And there's a little bit of difference with this because this is this one can be a little bit hard to see. Because we understand that Jesus Christ it literally says that there was a division in the crowd because of him, right? Now, you've got to look at his message to understand that he was not spreading strife. He was not telling people to be divided. He was not dividing people. He was trying to unify people in the kingdom of God. But because of his unifying message of the kingdom of God, people who believe unify people who did not believe. Um I don't want to use, I don't want to say something that's not a real word, de-unified or spread. They, uh, oh, how do I say this? They, um, dissented. It was dissension. So spreading strife is a, is a, is a, how do I say this? Spreading strife is an intentional thing is that I literally am trying to divide people. I'm trying to egg on an argument. You know the difference between a peacemaker and one who spreads strife. A peacemaker comes into a situation and they are for peace. Someone who spreads strife will, will throw gas on the fire of someone's anger towards someone else. A worthless person. Now, something else I want to get into this about in this passage, it says they will be thrown, they will be thrust away like thorns, like thorns, right? And this, this, made me it really did click in my mind about a lot of things we talk about thorns we can go all the way back to genesis with this genesis 3 17 and 19 says then to adam he said because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten from the fruit eaten from the tree about which i commanded you saying you shall not eat from it curses the ground because of you and toil you and toil you will eat of it all the days of your life both thorns and thistles it shall grow for you and you will eat the plants of the field by the sweat of your face you will eat bread Till you return to the ground because from it you were taken for you are dust and to dust you shall return so a lot of things about this that we'll come to understand about the, the thorn situation and i actually might read on a little bit more before i come back to this let's, let's read the next passage also Mark 4, 18, 19, this is Jesus in his Gospels. He's explaining the first parable he ever gave. He's giving us the black and white truth of what he says. And others are the ones on whom the seed was sown among the thorns. These are the, are the ones who have heard the word, but the worries of the world and deceitfulness of riches and desires for other things enter in and choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. Unfruitful, which we already know. What's unfruitful will be cast out. What is fruitful will be kept. So we have to understand that although this is the third soil, this is still not a soil that is acceptable to be ex to, to be kept by the Lord. Because like thorns, they will be thrust away. And understand also, he's implying that these thorns also are causing unfruitfulness. And the thorns are what? 
worries of the world, deceitfulness of riches, and desires for other things enter in. And I love how it just says other things because these are desires that are outside of the word of God. That are choking the fruit of the word of God. Now I want to go back to this because now that we know what the thorns are, right? The thorns are deceitfulness of riches. They are uh, worries of the world and their desires for other things, right? He literally says the ground is cursed because of you. But he said, well, first of all, he goes back. He says, because you listen to the voice of your wife, right? So you didn't choose to listen to the voice of the Lord. You didn't choose to walk in your knowledge of the Lord and your knowing of him. You didn't choose that. You chose the worthless route. The route that, that, that acts like it does not know him. Because you listen to another voice, because you listen to somebody else, because you decide to know your wife but not know the Lord. Look at the product of obeying her voice. Is that from the ground, thorns and thistles shall grow for you. What is he saying? What does this really mean? He talks, he's talking about your soil once again. Is he saying quite literally, there's this soil of your heart, the soil of your mind. He's literally trying to tell you that, listen, listen. And if I'm being 100 percent truthful, we're talking about the soil of your mind and, and truth and truth. We are now there is a relationship between your heart and your mind. And we'll talk about this. We'll talk about this over time. We will talk about this. There's a relationship that if your mind's unhealthy, so is your heart. If your heart's unhealthy, so is your mind. It's, it has to be that way. But he's literally telling him that you will work these grounds and it's going to grow what? Your mind is going to do nothing but grow worries of the world. So as you're working hard, yeah, you're trying to fix yourself. You're trying to do better. You're trying to do all these things, right? And he's literally telling you, that, that, listen, all that's going to come on in your mind is worries of the world, deceiveness of riches, and desires of other things. That is what's going to come from your ground. And also telling him that your ground is worthless because it all it does is produce thorns and thistles. So let's move on. Matthew 7, 16 to 20, it says, you will know them by their fruits. Grapes are not gathered from thorn bushes, nor figs from thistles, are they? So every good tree bears good fruit, but the bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot produce bad fruit, nor can a bad tree produce good fruit. Every tree does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown to the fire. So then you will know them by their fruits. Once again, it's another message from the spirit of the Lord of what is not fruitful, what is um, unproducing will be cast out into this fire. It's just the truth. It's the bottom line truth. But he's also trying to tell you that the good fruit of God, which we know that that um, we know the seven produces of God. Right now, we have talked about this very briefly in a, in, a, in a prior class. But the seven produces of God, which are the grain, the barley, um, the grain, the barley, the vine, which is grapes that grow from the vine, um, the fig tree, the pomegranate, olive oil and honey. Right. So he's naming off these good fruits of God. The grape is the third produce. The, the fig is the fourth produce. And he's literally telling you that you cannot get grapes from a thorn bush. You cannot get the good fruit of God from something ridden with worries of the world, deceitfulness of riches, and desires for other things. You cannot. You can't. Now, Paul also speaks about this very briefly. Hebrews 6, 7, 8, he says, For ground that drinks the rain, which often falls on it, and brings forth vegetation useful to those, to those for whose sake it is also tilled, receives a blessing from God. But if it yields thorns and thistles, it is worthless and, cl and close to being cursed, and it ends up being burned. The message from the Spirit of the Lord, once again. 
If it yields thorns and thistles, if it yields worries of the world, deceitfulness of riches, and desires for other things, it is worthless and close to being cursed, and it ends up being burned. It ends up being burned. Now, lastly, Proverbs 22, 5, it says, thorns, are, thorns and snares are in the way of the perverse. He who guards himself will be far from them. So wrapping this up about the worthless, about these people who are like thorns, he literally says that they're in the way of the perverse. That in actuality, these things are their stumbling blocks. Is that they're growing in this work. This person is, is harboring these deceitfulness of, of riches, these words of the world and these desire, desire for the things. And these are their own stumbling blocks. They're, they're in their way. But it's important to understand that if you're truly guarding yourself, you'll be far away from them. You'll be far away from it. And I think this is important though. If you're truly guarding yourself, if you're truly taking care of your heart, if you're truly taking care of your soul, you'll be very far from worries of the world and deceitfulness of riches and desire for other, for other things, if you're really guarding yourself. And so if those are things that you are dealing with, you have to ask yourself about your own obedience and your own guarding of your own soul and your own heart and what you've been walking towards and what you've been walking away from. Why are you close to these things if you're truly caring for your heart and your soul? And so that'll be the end of this talk. It's called The Untouchables. The Untouchables is that they're simply just not able to be touched. These people who are ridden with these words of the world, deceitfulness of riches and desire for the things. Oh my gosh, it hurts. It hurts to deal with them. It hurts to touch them. It hurts to help them. Is that they always end up stabbing you back. Why? Because their desires for other things. They'll hurt you for those desires. Why? Because of deceitfulness of riches. Because they love money so much. Trust me, they'll hurt you for that money. Because the words of the world, they're so worried, they can't even love you. They're hurting you can't even love you and so we do tithe and offering mfh pulls 800 dollars a week to ensure that god's work can and will continue through this ministry we will then redistribute all collective funds evenly back out to those that gave we'll be the first to bless you that's cash at money sign christ king way paypal at mfh ministry i hope this lesson bless you today lesson 40 the untouchables and we'll be back soon lesson 41 have a blessed day